I represent a group that is against military action in Syria. We are against it not because we are pacifist. We are against it not because we do not care about the awful things going on there. We are against it because we think there is some pretty poor thinking going on. This idea that somehow the rebels are the good guys and Assad are the bad guys uh, really is oversimplifying uh, a situation where, of course, we know that al-Qaeda have significant representation amongst those rebel groups. And, of course, we have seen it all before. An endless series of military adventures over the course of the last 10 to 15 years, uh, one of which, of course, notably in Afghanistan, is still going on and is not achieving any of the original aims. And I was worried when I heard the Americans telling us to begin with it was about punishing Assad and then within a week it was about regime change, a position that I know the noble baroness herself supports. We think firing a thousand cruise missiles in is likely to make an unstable situation even worse than it is now. But of course, Baroness Ashton, in a sense, you're sitting pretty because as the highest paid female politician in the world, luckily you've got a non-job because the EU, thank goodness, hasn't yet got a foreign policy. And as a result of that, what we saw two weeks ago in the House of Commons was a nation-state democracy standing up and saying something. And as a direct result of that vote in the House of Commons, we have not gone to war in Syria. We have entered a period of negotiations, and Assad has a chance to prove to all of us whether he's a good man or a bad man. I don't know how this will play out, but at least, Mr Verhofstadt, there is a chance of peace. And I know that you represent the kind of political class who believe that global influence can only be achieved through bombing. Well, luckily, unlike extreme EU nationalists like yourself, British democracy has proved that through nation-state parliaments, through nation-state parliaments, we've actually made people rethink. And, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I have to say, I have to say, Mr. Chairman, that having, as somebody that has been here now for 14 years, it's very ironic that the view that I used to represent was called extreme. But you can see the extreme militarists now. Thank you. So, I have, I have two blue cards. Uh, do you accept it? I name. Ich nehme, ich nehme keine, keine mehr, bitte. Zu Wort gemeldet ist Herr Denock mit seiner Frage. Herr Denock. Mr. Herr Ver Mr. Farage, Nigel, Mr. Farage, over here. Um, you talked about the good guys and the bad guys. It's not about the good guys and the bad guys. You remember well the battlefields of the First World War. You take a great interest in that war. And you remember the horrors of the use of gas. Would you not accept that a red line has been crossed by the Assad regime in using gas against his own people? And if so, what should be done to stop other dictators and despots using it elsewhere, not just against civilians, but actually in military conflict? So what would your response be to the use of a weapon of mass destruction? Sit back and do nothing? Thank you. The good guys, bad guys story, uh, really I take from your own Foreign Secretary and Party Member William Hague, who of course was urging the international community to arm the rebels, something that struck me given we know Al-Qaeda's in, in, in involvement as being total and utter madness. I am cynical and sceptical, as are much of the European public, about who has used those weapons until we get the full report and we get the intelligence right. We went to war in Iraq, we went to war in Iraq, being told that Saddam had weapons of... Why don't you shut up and listen for a change? You must be, you really must be the vilest, rudest man in European politics. And you rant on and the chair lets you get away with it because you're the former Prime Minister of Belgium. Well, there we are. Um, so, so, Mr Tannock, I understand what you're saying. I understand something ghastly has happened here, but before you take military action, you need to be certain you're going to make things better and not worse. The time, the time is over. The blue card is one question and one answer. I have a second question from Mr. Jan Paschko. Jan Paschko. Mr. Farage. Would you stop the chronometer, please?
May I, may I address the question? Mr. Farage, I am coming from Romania and maybe living like a pig, as you describe the Romanians. But in this room, in this house, I think that we have the same rights altogether. Therefore, I'm asking you, you said that this is an opportunity for Assad to demonstrate whether he is a good man or a bad man. Do you think that 100,000 killed there proves him to be a good man? Because I don't. Do you? Sir, I will say this to you. I have never described the Romanians as living like pigs. What I said was the Romanians treat their Roma minority like pigs. All right, so let's get that absolutely clear. You and your country discriminate against a large group of people in a way we have not seen in Europe since the 1930s. All right, now look, I am not taking sides in this civil war, but I am saying this that whether it's through the use of gas or whether it's through the use of other forms of high explosives or bullets, there are terrible things happening in Syria. I understand that and I agree with that. But rushing to war, as we did in Afghanistan, as we did in Iraq, was a mistake. And Mr Cameron tried to bounce us into war and thank goodness the House of Commons has given us pause for thought. Surely that must be a good thing. So, meine, meine Damen und Herren, ich bitte Sie, zu bedenken, dass